Hello guys, I hope you are doing good. Welcome to this new video. Today we are going to solve another interesting JavaScript problem. Few years back during the pandemic, someone has contacted me on LinkedIn he, and he told me that um, he was asked an interview question and he could not solve that. So he asked me to uh, you know provide the solution for the same. The interview question was asked in no brokers interview and once he explained me the problem statement i thought it was a really good um, good question for practice right and it also resonates with the uh, uh, daily work that we do as a front end engineer so i thought of giving it a try and once i saw that uh, i had written about that on my blog so today i'm going to walk through walk you through the question and then we'll try to solve this there are two approaches to solve this problem in this video we are going to use the first approach and then in the another video i'm going to explain you how to you know do the same problem statement with the different approach so the problem statement read as we have to capture the product visible on the viewport when user stops scrolling for a certain time for example right now in front of you this is the mintra's website right and we are seeing uh, a product listed over here in the grid format so there are t-shirts listed over here there are five t-shirts and then there are another five below that so let's say i'm navigating through the website and once i well, i'm scrolling right i'm navigating through the product and once i stop let's say i stop over here now in the viewport see these five the top five products are being cut right on the upper side and the below fire also cut in half so what's visible in the viewport is this fire product and the uh, the perspective over here is if user has stopped scrolling that means the user is looking at the product so what we have to do is we have to capture this fire products and store it somewhere so when user na is navigating through the website and if he stops scrolling for a certain amount of time right let's say one second two second or three second that means he is interested in the product that is being visible in the viewport so these five products so we'll uh, we'll capture this file and then this file this data can be either used in the promotion or in the emails right so if you uh, if you notice when you are uh, navigating any web uh, any websites such as Mintra and if you are you know uh, staying and uh, looking at the product you will see that in in the future or in maybe in sometimes you receive mail about these products or in the AdSense you see the ads related to these products so they capture um, you know, based on the mindset that user may be looking at the product it may be for different reason user has stopped but they believe that if user has stopped they may be looking at the product so we need to capture that so we are going to do the same thing let's move to the code pan over here you see right i have created a grid that uh, represents the product so i have created a total of 28 grids sorry uh, i think we just need 27 so let me delete the last one because we actually don't need that and if i run this again so we should have the 27 grids okay so this is in the row of three and we'll do the same thing once the user scrolls whichever grid is in the complete viewport right so if you see right now there are these nine grids that is in complete viewport 10 11 12 13 14 up to 18 so we are going to store these numbers in an array um, representing that these are the product the user is currently looking at so there are two approaches to solve this first is let's say you have created this application right you have created this mintra uh, website and now you have the complete control over the code so you can um, uh, write the code in the uh, application code or the website code and handle this feature otherwise you are creating an sdk that sdk will be injected in any website and that sdk will handle uh, or will capture the product visible so uh, right now in this video we are going to go through the sdk uh, from the perspective of sdk and in the next video i'll show you how you you know uh, how we can solve this uh, when we have created this uh, same product in the react so right now i'll be solving this in uh, vanilla javascript from the perspective of sdk so that you know you can use this sdk on any website and in the next video we'll see uh, what if we have created the same application and react then how we can 
you know capture this so our um, boilerplate or our, our template is ready the html template the products is visible now let's write the javascript code over here so uh, as explained right when user is scrolling and he stops for certain amount of time we have to capture the product that is visible in the viewport so if i break down the problem statement it is like if user stops scrolling so we have to listen to the scroll event and then we have to debounce the event to make sure that if user stops for certain amount of time right then only we have to capture this so we have to if user stops scrolling that means we have to use scroll event and that also after a delay so we will be using debounced scroll event after that we have to capture the products visible in viewport so we have to detect html elements that are in viewport so let's handle the second part first detecting if the html element right if these elements are in the viewport or not and after that once we have created our function to detect the html elements we will listen to the scroll event and that's it so to here we have to uh, you know detect if the element is in viewport or not so a element a element is in viewport if it is between the top bottom left and right that means let's say the width of this viewport right from the top this black bar to this bottom black bar it's 100 pixel so this 10 should be placed between this length that means the bottom position of this 10 grid should be greater than should be less than 100 so it should be between 0 to 100 and the top position should be greater than 0 similarly the left position should be greater than 0 and the right position should be less than the width of this viewport so we have view we have height and to detect if it is in the viewport or not its top should be greater than 0 its bottom should be less than the height of the viewport its left should be greater than 0 and its right should be less than the width of the viewport that's it now there is a property or a method in javascript that provides us the dimension of each element it is called get bounding client rectangle this gives us the complete dimension of an element so let's say these are blocks right let me pull one block and check const block so because we are annotated each element with the class blocks let me pull one so document dot query selector and i'm going to pull the first block element blocks and now let's see the dimension of it so get bounding client rectangle this should give us the dimension of the element so let me clear this see here if you see when i run this i get all the dimension of the element so its x position is 13 y is 13 all these are in pixel width is 374 pixel height is 75 pixel and then its top right bottom and left position using this we can detect if the element is in the viewport or not so let's create our function const in viewport so this will detect if the given element is in the viewport or not and here we'll accept the element as input and we'll get its dimension the element dimension and here let me remove the blocks sorry and i want to get the dimension of the element once i have the dimension i just have to detect if the element's top is greater than zero or not and bottom is less than the height of the viewport so let's get the height const view height and the view height will be window because we are checking on the viewport right so we are detecting on window windows inner height 
or if the window property is not present so as a precaution we are using an alternative document dot document element dot line height so this will give us the body's height and if the window property is not present for the older browser just for the precaution we are using this similarly i am going to get the view width so the view width will be the inner width of the window inner width and if the window dot inner width property is not present then we are going to use the client width so we got the elements dimension we got the viewport and now let's do the detection so here the first thing we are checking is if the element dimension dot top is greater than or equal to zero and its left should also be greater than or equal to zero and its right should be less than the width of the viewport and its bottom should be less than the height view height so its bottom should be less than the view height if all this condition matches that means our element is in within the viewport so we got our function to check in the viewport now create let's create the second function which will get all the block elements and it will detect each of them one by one once we stop the scrolling so const detect i'm creating this function and here i'm creating this array to store the number of the element that is within the viewport it's the result and then let's get all the elements so document dot query selector all dot blocks and then after that for each element we'll do the detection so if the element is in viewport if in viewport element then we are going to store the number in the result and uh, once the detection is done we are going to print that console dot log result so that's it our function is ready to detect our function is uh, uh, ready to get all the blocks and check that and then our function to detect if the element is in the viewport or not is also ready so we have the two function the last thing we have to do is we have to listen to the scroll event so window dot add event listener sorry scroll and then we have to do the detection now because we have to do the debounce detection right as user keeps scrolling we don't have to detect that will be expensive operation what we want to do is if user stops for certain amount of time while scrolling then only we have to do the detection so for that we'll have to create a debounce function sorry debounce detection so here on the learns bucket.com i'm going to get the debounce function sorry not this one this is the this is the one with the immediate flag we want the normal function so let me copy this and i'm pasting it over here let's create debounced detect so here we'll use the debounce function to this we'll pass the detect and this will be invoked after one second of delay you can increase the time or you can make it configurable but i'm here detecting the you know, blocks only once the user has stopped scrolling for one second and then i have created this event listener so this should do let's run the code let me open the console clear this let me scroll this up so right now if you see i'm here right i'm keeping the viewport of this height so if i scroll a little bit we should get four five six seven eight nine 
and then 10 11 12 all these is on in view port let's say if i increase this much right and if i scroll a little bit over here so this 10 11 12 won't come right now because they are partially hidden so we are getting 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so our function is working properly and let's say if i do this so now 7 8 9 up to 12 will come 4 5 6 won't come because they are partially partially hidden on the top so this is how you can convert this code into hdk all you have to do is you have to get the entry point so these blocks right because i have created this html element i am pulling these blocks so if you convert this code to hdk you have to create an entry point in which you will detect if this is a product or a grid or not so you take this value as an uh, a configuration option or as an input and also the duration and then you can use this code on any website to de detect if the product is in viewport or not and then capture it this is one way of doing is in the second uh, uh, approach that we'll see in the next video we'll see how to do this with the interaction observer so interaction observer is a api provider provided by browser using which we can detect if any block element or any html element is interacting or not currently with the user so using that we can detect the same thing we can implement the same feature so in the next video we'll see that I hope you have learned something new. Thank you for your time.